Hello everybody, Bruno here from Lightman Images and Photography. I'm coming to you from Perth in Western Australia. I am a corporate headshot and portrait photographer, but I embarked on a large format photography a few months ago and I'm loving it, learning a lot, asking a lot of questions. And uh, so many of my questions went unanswered because everybody's doing the same thing until I came across uh, Nick Carver with uh, some of the answers that I have. And Nick Carver from NickCarverPhotography.com managed to bridge the gap of uh, what I was lacking and uh, what you guys have been teaching me uh, through all of the videos uh, that we have around. Everybody's doing the same thing, but uh, yeah, which is not a problem, but uh, at the end of the day, uh, it's about learning and I would like to learn. So ask a lot of questions. Sometimes they seem stupid to a lot of people, but uh, they haven't been able to give me the answers until now. So with the answer that Nick Carver kind of provided me, and the technique that I'm trying to work on, which is image plane focusing, uh, I try to photograph anything and everything. Even though I'm a corporate headshot and portrait photographer, I need to consolidate that technique and then be sure that I can do it when I have a human being in front of my lens, so I don't have to fumble around. So for that reason, I'm photographing anything and everything, and it's not about creating an, a work of art, and I'm trying to photograph at any condition, you know, lighting condition that is, I know I can manage the exposure. That's not a problem whatsoever. But when it comes to actually the technique of focusing and getting everything to be what I want, as opposed to doing something arbitrarily, mm -hmm. this is the journey that I'm on right now. And the point in case is that I was away for five days, put my camera into the car with me and then loaded a lot of film. And then to add one more stick into the spokes, I decided to go, <laughs> I started to shoot some um, slat films as well, all right? And uh, so I was on a highway 500 kilometers away from uh, home and I saw this uh, shearing shed. I stopped, I went to ask the owner of the property, so he gave me permission to be on the property and do whatever that I wanted to do. So I managed to shoot two shots and then one of them I wanted to do a swing so I can practice swing with the image plane focusing that I'm learning right now. And it didn't work because my bellows movement were 12 millimeters, so that's huge. And so with that kind of, you know, uh, movement, I need to shoot at least at the minimum aperture of F59 or F60 thereabout. And that's too, too much. And I was using this lens here, which is my 180 mil lens, and it goes at the smallest aperture, F64. So shooting at F, you know, 60, I'm in a diffraction country there. And uh, so something wasn't right. And I didn't do it, but yet, since my image been focusing using swing failed for this particular shot here, I just arbitrarily closed my lens to f64, like what most of us are doing, swing, and then just close the aperture until everything is sharp and, and, and shoot, which is not right. Something is wrong there. Okay, and that's what I did because I failed to apply image plane focusing. I don't know why the reason, so I'm just gonna leave this, even though I got the image, and the image is here, and one of the things that I wanted to be within my image plane focusing zone was this box of old uh, stereo, and I wanted to cover that with an aperture between F16 and F32 at the most. Image plane focusing can give me that if I've done it properly, but I didn't. So I got that image and I went outside to do the outside. Okay, so for the outside, it was just a straight image print focusing and it gave me, uh, I think, uh, it gave me an aperture of F20 to cover my depth of field, but I think my eyes being not as good because I wear glasses. So F32 was what I shot it at, okay? So I just wanna share with you the process. Right now, my vintage point has changed from where I was before, and uh, but my composition remains relatively the same. So I'm just going to apply image plane focusing very quickly because I know here it's a straightforward. So let's get to it so we can get this shot. All right, so I'm going to go on the ground just right here in front of me. The grass in front of me here. There. So what do we got? 
Yeah, they're about, yep. And my thigh is gonna be the small tree, or the smaller of the two trees behind the shed. There we go. What have we got here? We got only four millimeters to play with. And okay, so let me set that focus very quickly. There we go. All right, so let's close this baby now and see if I'm gonna get somewhere around F20, F22. Cause that's gonna be my minimum required aperture. Remember I said absolute minimum, not anything. Okay, so I want to see that tree in the back there. How is that tree looking? It's looking, it's looking. The gravel is looking okay, but I think I should get more detail there. But it's not a big part of the scene. So, oops. So I'm happy to leave it there. We're there. F32, I'll take F32, F20, that's F22 for me. If I was to go to one more stop, close my aperture a little bit more, my eyes play, my eyes play trick on me all the time, that would help me try to cover that depth of field a little bit, yeah? So at F32, we're ready to go. Okay, so let's close this shutter here, cut the shutter, and get a light reading, and see how we go. All right, so now I'm shooting Ectochrome E100. So I need to set my light meter to 100, and I'm gonna be shooting box speed. This is the scene before us, and I don't mind, uh, you know, the front of the shade with a little bit of uh, streaks of duffel lights coming through. Yeah, but if I wait long enough, the sun is gonna be covered by the uh, the clouds and then those uh, uh, bright areas will be a little bit softer okay but in the meantime let's go on and establish our exposure and i think some of the whitish parts of the and uh, the roof actually brighter than the you know the sky that's into my, sh my into my frame right now so i'm gonna cut a meter there as being my brightest and see what i get so i'm get getting 19 bullets okay 19 EV that is and I'm gonna be shooting uh, ectochrome so I need to place that accordingly oh boys so that's very 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 bright the Sun just poked out and then it was gone back to yeah it's still 19 okay so the front of the building between those two windows here it's giving me AB14 and two bullets. Okay, so it's putting me uh, to where it's saying that it's very, very dark. And I don't like that idea either. So now let me see where the very, very dark is, which is the hanger on the side there. It's giving me EV of 11 and two bullets. So it's way beyond the, the dynamic range of what we got going on right now. So the cloud just cover the sun so now I'm getting 17 bullets 17 and one bullet so that might work okay 17 and one bullet 13 and two bullets we can go with that and I have to work very quick here yeah and then we got the sun completely covered right now but I'm still not happy with my exposure so I'm still looking for where I need to put it and I think I got it as long as the sun doesn't come out okay and now oh come on cloud stay there for a little bit I just need two-thirds of a stop more to be able to get detail using ectochrome to see some of these uh, boats and stuff that's under that hanger there okay but in the meantime I'm gonna lock everything in and pop in my film
the light is soft enough but it just not uh, exactly what I want it okay f32 at 1 15th of a second sweet okay so for this particular shot I like the result my exposure was relatively there I think I could have done it just I think I could give it a little bit more uh, light there by making it a bit brighter. But at the end of the day, you know, I'm happy with it, especially the first time shooting slide film, as most of you talk about, you know, slide films are very, very uh, unforgiving and so forth. And I think I did myself just this year. And uh, it's uh, an encouragement. And uh, image pen focusing, it was windy and so on. So that means my trees, you know they're moving all over the place even some of the grass as well but yet everything is nice and sharp you know as i want to and i scan i developed the film at home you know with the e6 uh, chemicals here and uh, i scanned them myself as well you know on my epson uh, perfection v850 pro but the problem that i don't like are those blue fringing on the uh, edge of the trees or between the trees where we have uh, a little bit of sky showing and so on so i got a lot of learning to do and uh, that too i'm gonna reach out to some of you guys uh, on your epson uh, scanners and drop to see how you scan your film and so on and maybe i can improve uh, my scanning from there but overall you know i think image blend focusing worked for the second image and uh, i got the result that i wanted and there is still a lot more that I need to share with you. And if you want to join me on that journey for the next video, for this particular five day trip, you know what to do. So until then, cheers.